I read a saying the other day that is apparently shared among some Christians that I have been led to understand is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. You can look him up if you wish. And his saying is, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Now, my understanding of this phrase, as interpreted by those Christians that are familiar with it, is that it means that we are to live God's truth before others without actually having to explain it, and that this by itself is sufficient to fulfill God's command to preach the gospel. But if you have to, because people just aren't getting it, then go ahead and use words to share the gospel. Now, that sounds eerily like some things that I have personally listened to others teach um, over the last you know, 10 years or so to other Christians, that all we have to do is live Jesus out in our lives, and that that by itself will preach the gospel, that then people will then be curious enough that they will wonder amongst themselves, or they will ask you directly, what is it about you that makes me want what you have? And then this morning, I was reading 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. And that verse seemed to contradict that understanding that I had just shared. But at the same time, I want to be very cautious, and I don't want to neglect or to understate the importance of how we live and conduct ourselves, both in private and around others. Of course, our lives should never detract from God's word and our message Indeed, the Christian is called to live in such a way that makes the gospel attractive, as we are reminded in Titus 2.10, where we are told to show that they, meaning we as Christians, can be fully trusted, so that in every way they, meaning we as Christians, will make the teaching about God, our Savior, attractive. But ultimately, the Word of God is to be proclaimed, and we must use His words. When I was working for a ministry, Wycliffe Associates, I was an IT director in Wycliffe Associates, which um, facilitates Bible translations around the world. By the way, I love that ministry. But there were plenty of people that were working in that ministry and walking around that I would not even know that they were Christian if they weren't working in that environment. I include myself in, in that category, so I'm constantly pulling that plank out of my eye. Um, however, there were two men Boy, I want to go at it by name, but I know that one of them in particular is going to see this video, so I don't want to embarrass them. But there were two men in particular that simply projected love. There was something that, about them that said, I love you. I wanted what they had, and I wanted to be like them. Without even speaking, these guys just they exhibited love. There was something that's it's, it's just difficult to explain, but I'm sure that all of you have experienced that. I spent as much time as I could hanging around these guys. I would go into their office and I would have conversations with them. And I was very open with them. I'm just trying to suck. And I'm trying to bring some of that aura that they had about themselves in. I wanted to know them and I wanted to be around them. I wanted to, snow, to soak in what it is that they were projecting. What these two men had to share with me is in complete alignment. It's in sync with how they carried themselves in their character and their behavior. That aura that they projected that was easily sensed and I, you could feel it around them. They didn't have to say anything. It was amazing. But yet it also caused me to wonder, what is wrong with me? These Laying these, these subtle seeds of doubt in my head. Why can't I be like them? Why can't I present myself in a way that people can simply feel the love that I have for the body? It's not that I was jealous. I wasn't jealous and, you know, there wasn't any pride in there. But I suppose that there was a lot of envy because I knew that without a doubt that this is what Christ wants for us all. And I did not feel that I had it. So after leaving in Wycliffe Associates in 2018, I can honestly say that I really miss these two guys more than any others at that organization. It's not to downplay the others and, 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 and the gifts that they're sharing in that ministry but I really miss those two guys. I have been around a lot of people. I've got a 20-year military career. I've been around a lot of great military leaders, super charismatic. There are people that I've been around in my non-Christian life and my Christian life that I completely trust. 
But that is different than what I'm talking about with these two guys at Wycliffe. I don't want to downgrade what other people have as far as their anointing is concerned, um, as we are all different. But I can honestly say that I have never been around other men like those two guys. So as I read through 2 Timothy chapter 4, those two men were immediately illumined on my heart and in my mind this morning. And then I remembered that phrase about uh, how we conduct ourselves and then that's not good enough. These guys did preach the word as Paul tells us, but they were also living it, at least when I was around them anyway. So, so in the meantime, what to do? So I've decided that the path for me is to continue to immerse myself in his word, that I'm going to continue to bear my heart and I'm going to continue to talk with others. So when people engage with me, it is very apparent that I have a lot of passion. Uh, there's a lot in my heart, even if they are perhaps taken a little aback, you know, they, they back off a little bit because I'm very ver verbose and I talk very fast, which is why I don't like doing videos um, or even podcasts for that matter. But, but what I can say is that with complete sincerity, that, it, that I have never felt alive. I don't feel as alive as I do when I'm sharing my heart about Jesus, about the gospel with others. I feel alive right now talking to this camera than I do when I'm not. So I don't know how I feel about the thought about me preaching as the scriptures always discuss. As I'm not a pastor, but I am very comfortable with the thought of sharing what the scripture illumines to me, even if it is very pointed and directed. I will always use myself as an example because I am a very flawed human being and I have 40 years of significant flaws of living in sin and, and blasphemy uh, prior to, to, to me coming to Christ. Um, see, I got my notes. That's why I don't like doing videos. Um, but anyway, so I was talking about that, that, that I just, I, the, the thought of me saying preaching is something that, that um, is, is difficult for me to think about because I'm not a pastor. But as we learn to share the gospel at a minimum, it is okay that we, as his disciples, practice, isn't it? So not practicing the action of talking. That's not what I'm talking about. So yes, I'm practicing and how I'm doing a video right now. I'm practicing um, kind of how I share what's on my script right below this camera here um, and to, to maybe get off track a little bit. But um, no, I'm talking about the practicing, the, the practice to listen, to listening for what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Sometimes we miss it, but over time we get it. And over more time, the process gets easier. This is very similar to what they teach regarding the, the gift of prophecy. If any of you have been to to, to schools of prophecy, or maybe you've been to sessions about prophecy, they encourage you practicing your gift of prophecy so that you can properly discern words of knowledge or, you know, discernment about a future action or something that's happening in something's life. You, you know, so you only learn to develop your gift of prophecy as you practice it. So the same thing is we sit here and talk about the gospel and as we share the gospel, we get better at it the more that we practice. We need to practice because the process of preaching and teaching of the word can have a life-changing, yoke-destroying effect on people's lives. The word of God will break down the strongholds and it's going to release the supernatural power of God and transform the minds and lives as it changes the external destinies of people. I am a personal witness to that. And perhaps one day, one day, the word of God is going to pour out of you even when you're not speaking it, simply via your presence. Which is a good transition back to, to 2 Timothy uh, 4.2. So as you read that verse, and I'm going to read it here in the, I got, we'll read it in the Amplified. Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. So as I 
again, that was the amplified, you know, I don't know what, it, what, what Charles preferred translation is, but I kind of like the amplified um, at emphasis in some areas. Um, so, so anyway, so as we, as we read that verse, we may tend to believe that this is only applicable to the pulpit, but that is not what Paul says. As I had alluded to earlier, the word preach from the original Greek means to publish or to proclaim openly. So when Paul tells Timothy to preach the word, the idea of a formal setting behind a pulpit or in a church service, it's not there. That's not what he says. Nor does it connote a certain style of speech. It doesn't say preaching versus teaching versus normal conversation. So in the context of 2 Timothy, any presentation of the truth of God's word is preaching. Any of it. Therefore, any Christian can and should do this. So I guess I should take back my original discomfort of me in that action of preaching. Uh, perhaps some of you should as, as well. Uh, so the word can be proclaimed in books. So, so some of you know that I've written one book and published, and I've got two more that I'm in the middle of writing now. Um, it could be in magazine articles. It can be in an email. Uh, I'm not a fan of bumper sticker memes, but the word can be proclaimed through Facebook posts and tweets. The word can be proclaimed through music and visual arts. It can be proclaimed by a get well card to a sick friend. The word can be proclaimed by men, women, and children of every age in any station in life. And yes, the word can and should be proclaimed when the church gathers together for corporate worship. Whether the pastor is preaching from behind a pulpit or whether he is sitting on a stool and he's just talking to the congregation. And if why our pastor at the church that we presently go to, he does that. He has um, where some people are sitting up around a table and they have a dialogue going back and forth. And that's the sermon. And it has been well received. And it definitely shakes things up a little bit and keeps you kind of alive and moving, which is phenomenal. So all of us, all of us are responsible to preach, not just the pastor. And that is to communicate God's word to others in whatever situation we find ourselves and with whatever tools of communication we can muster. My tools right now are books, um, the articles that I write, the emails that I send, future videos, this one and others, and those sorts of things. So 2 Timothy 4.2 goes on to tell us that we should be able to, or, or should be ready, I'm sorry, to, to do this when it is convenient and when it is not. Perhaps one of the most convenient times is when faithful church members have gathered to hear the pastors preach. Perhaps one of the most inconvenient times is when a group of co-workers are gathered around the water cooler um, or in the line at the Walmart or whatever. Um, even when it is inconvenient, we must proclaim the word with great patience and careful instruction, even when the situation calls for rebuke. So therefore, you know, for me, if I want to be like those two men from Wycliffe Associates who poured out the gospel simply by their very presence, then I need to constantly be in the word. I need to strive to always live it out. And I need to always be ready to preach it and communicate it no matter the time and no matter the obstacles that are placed before me. Doing this video is a huge obstacle for me because I'm very uncomfortable with... Um, well, with the way I look, the, the sound of my voice, and those sorts of things. I'm sure many of you can feel the same. Um, so today, my message is via the books that I've written and the books that I'm writing, the articles I've written and the articles that I will write, uh, the videos that I have done, and the videos that I will do. The rest of it is up to the Lord. And as Paul instructed Timothy that I intend, me, I intend to stay put, and I intend to remain at my post, just as any soldier of Christ should do. So thank you for allowing me to practice sharing him with you as much as it means to me. So for practice is how the Lord is preparing me and you. So I would encourage you to practice as well. This preaching of the word is necessary because the time is going to come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, they're going to do it to suit their own desires. And they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. And you'll see those in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 through 4. People normally tend to be comfortable with falsehood. And Timothy has to combat that tendency 
by being ready at all times to preach to preach the truth. And that is to preach the word of God. So how this can apply to everyday Christians who does not have the opportunity to preach in a church service? The answer comes from proper understanding of the word translated preach, which is in our all of our communications and via different mediums. It does not have to be from the pulpit, nor does it have to be the pastor. So one thing is for sure. As you determine to remain faithful to your divine call and to, to the place where God has assigned you, he is going to empower you with inner strength that enables you to see it through to a glorious conclusion. Amen. Appreciate you giving me this time. God bless you all.